And I think what you get in a Nolan film is a level of authenticity that the actors respond to very strongly, the crew responds to very strongly. That becomes key to telling the story for me, so they can believe in the experience they're seeing in a tactile sense. Airplanes flying over, and we see, which we do in this movie, huge boats going in and out of that harbor. You know big things are afoot. He, I think, puts something into that celluloid that the audience in darkened rooms will intuit. The call went out. We have to go to Dunkirk. Ready on the stern line. What are you doing? You know where we're going. Into war, George. We then had to deal with the issues that the water threw at us. That was an enormous challenge. We had as many as 62 vessels on one day with major logistical hurdles. Safety boats, camera boats, makeup and hair. And every time that you shot in a certain direction, all those boats would have to move so that they were out of the shot. And, and that was an incredible thing to get a glimpse of. Being in a boat in open sea in the channel is, is, is very challenging. It has a very sort of aggressive short waves. Seeing Hoyter holding that camera, particularly when it was rockier and we were rocking back and forth like this, to, just to see them keeping the camera on, so, on a man's shoulder. I don't think that camera was ever um, designed to be held up. With a great handheld cameraman like Hoyter, that is your most stable camera platform. That's your most versatile camera platform on a moving boat. In combination with having a very efficient camera, but a catamaran with the inch arm mounted on a stabilized head that could keep pace with the other boats. And, stabilize above the water to different degrees so we could either see the movement of the boat or not or take it out as we wanted to so we could shoot boat to boat in a very versatile way as well being out on the water on the moonstone you're being thrown from one side to the other people flying at you from all angles because the water's so active that was where we did the real thing and it's going to show in the film you know the authenticity of it We had naval destroyers. We had real little ships there, boats that had actually come across. We were shooting at the same time of year in the same place that they came to. We had rebuilt the mole. We had the, the damage of the town, the smoke for real, to be able to fly a real uh, airplane rather than making a perfect CG replica. That felt quite extraordinary. From a production point of view, it's exhilarating because you're standing there and you're looking at the thing unfold in front of you. It becomes absolutely part of how your character develops when you're actually in the environment and it's happening to you. It's very helpful to have a, a real Spitfire or two and a Messerschmitt and a couple of other things fly low over your boat. What of ours? And then the, the force of that engine. It's just insane to watch these you know, Spitfires feet above your head. When did you ever get to do that as a human being? You know, and, and, and playing, playing those situations, literally all you had to do was watch what was happening. It's so easy and so pleasurable when there's less to try and imagine. I mean, you stand on a battleship, which is already crazy, and then a Spitfire goes by you. The audience will believe. I think they will just know and then they'll feel it. That's the reality that we want to give the audience so that they can feel that they're there. The, the huge challenge of the IMAX format is the size and weight of the cameras. But the reason we were shooting on IMAX film is the immersive quality of the image is second to none. So our feeling was if we, could, if we could find a way to do it physically, the payoff would be well worth it. Figuring out the engineering problems of attaching an IMAX camera to a plane. Hoist of working with the Panavision guys and the IMAX guys, really trying to get a lens where the head of the pilot would be look around and see what that pilot would see. I really wanted to make that camera uh, work as any other camera you would use. Handheld and underwater in a very sort of intuitive and impulsive way that you can possibly use a film camera. And we made it work. It was massively important to us to do that because we really wanted to be able to get our actors up into the air. The shots in the film where you see one of the actors in a Spitfire, you know, just beyond them, another Spitfire. That's the single coolest thing I've ever been involved in, is, is when you can look over and there is a Spitfire banking around next to you. We were flying over where it happened. I mean, ridiculous. 
It is absolutely insane. There's really no way that you could create that in a computer. That intimate physicality, that tiny cockpit. It's on me. To be in there for an hour or two. We really focused on that as being one of the most important aspects of the film. Putting the audience in that seat. I'm on him. Which is an extremely difficult thing to do. You see these, you know, amazing airplanes in beautiful natural light through the canopy of the Spitfire and the other plane in the sky shot on IMAX entirely in camera. It's not, it's not something you've seen before. You know, put yourself in a, in a seat in an IMAX theater and you look at it, you know, you, you see what it does to you, you see what it does to you emotionally, you see how appealing an image like that can be. You start to find ways to, you know, bring it with you on the set and to work with it. That's the more important tonal authenticity. Put the audience right there and give them that experience. The thing that Chris does in his movies, which I really appreciate, is that when you watch them in the cinema, you're experiencing something that you couldn't experience anywhere else. It's a Christopher Nolan film. I mean, it's going to be exciting and it's going to be moving and entertaining. Knowing that this actually happened to people in real life makes it pretty intense. You're right there with those guys. You're right there with the kids. You ask yourself the question, what would I do? Films need to tell very essential stories, mythical stories, an essential kind of experience through the way that Chris has constructed the screenplay and, and is directing it. The audience gets a unique perspective that the participants don't have. The ship's about to leave! To see it on that big screen with a bunch of other people around them, they're going to have a really fantastic experience that they couldn't have anywhere else. For me, Dunkirk is the ultimate sort of life or death race against time. Every hour, the enemy pushes closer. That's what the reality of the situation was, and so we've really tried to throw the audience into that with a degree of intensity, with a respect for history, but with a sense of entertainment, with a sense of the blockbuster. We want to give people a really intense ride as they go through it, really put people there and allow them to feel what that experience would have been like.